This is part two of a quick questions and answer that I did with Ariga Sensei from Butokuden, Irvine, California during the Butokuden International Gashiku, which is a great experience and if you're abroad or you would like to participate, you should write him an email here. I hope you find value in this video. I would like to thank Ariga Sensei again for doing this, for sharing his knowledge with us, but also for spreading candle around the world and making more accessible the purchase of candle supplies in many different countries. So please, if you can, take a second to check his website wherever you're in the world. My previous video was about how to grow as an instructor, how to grow Kendo in general. This one's going to be how can we grow ourselves. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and you find value in it. If you do, please hit the like button. And if you haven't, think about subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video. I think the basic exercise of doing, uh, when, when, even when you do subori, you should be trying to focus on each part of the movement. And I, what I tell my students is every time they make a strike, I always try to check the things that they learned and then not just do it as a simple exercise, but try to make each hit a valid hit. Each time they hit, they do a self-checkup before striking. And that's what I do too. I think that every time you practice, no matter how strong the opponent is, you could be practicing with the sensei or you could be practicing with the little kid, always try to do your best and at least try to do one good strike, especially the first strike, you should try to do a good strike. Of course, if you're doing it with a with the child, then you let them hit, but then maybe one in 10 or one in five, you try a good strike and that's how you can prove even though, you know, uh, your time is limited. Outside of the dojo, I run, I, I go jogging and, you know, to keep my lower body strong. Also, you know, even when I walk, I try to keep my posture correct so that when you do kamae, you can still keep the posture correct. And that, that's something that comes automatically. So you have to do that you know, on a daily basis, like during the day when you're not in the dojo. One thing to grow the confidence, which uh, worked for me too. If you practice very hard, then you, you have that confidence that you did practice. And that's, that's like taking a, a school exam. If you study really hard, you, at least you have the confidence that you studied. So that's one thing that I tell my students, you know, just keep practicing hard and one day they'll get better. Tokui waza is like your favorite waza and I think you can start by copying somebody that that's really good. All Japan champions, those kind of players, they, they all have some kind of Tokui waza. And then you can try that and then see if it works for you. If it works, then you can keep practicing hard to get better at it. For example, my, my son, he, he has a very good hikiwaza, hikimen, and he he gets maybe more than 70% of his points in hikiwaza, which I don't know if it's good, but that's, that's something that it's a secret weapon that he can use whenever he needs to get a point. So you just keep practicing until you, you develop the tokuiwaza. My goal in kendo is to do a type of kendo that whoever practices with me, they would say, oh, I want to practice with uh, Taro Ariga again, one more time. To do that, you have to be, of course, strong. If you're too weak, nobody wants to practice with you. So you have to be strong. But also do nice kendo, so that when you do keiko with, with an opponent, you know, you, you try your hardest, and then the opponent will do the hardest to you too, and that's how we can improve each other. So that's my goal about kendo.